and um, yeah, good job I remembered before we got too far into it. So welcome wherever you are in the world, whether you can we see we've got some familiar faces and some new faces, but everybody's welcome. Um, my name's Leanne Lineker. I'm one of the directors of Lila, and I have with me Jim Masterclass Pearson, who <laughs> is one of the very best teachers, one of the most experienced, one of the kindest that um, that I think is on the circuit in the UK, and we're very proud that he's chosen to spend his time at Lila and develop his career with us. Um, he's very much in demand. Um, he is sought after speaker from Macmillan Publishers, um, Quality English, often call on his services when they want an expert to give an opinion. He's published uh, reports and articles for Cambridge as part of the work he does on CELTA, which is a teacher training course. And gosh, when we were talking a couple of um, these classes ago about how many students he's supported through CELTA to become English language teachers. And I think he's a proud father of close to 700, 800 um, now teachers, which is an amazing achievement. Um, that's a little bit about Jim. And I wanted to give you a bit of information about Lila. So that's me and my sister, Victoria. Um, she's the other director. It's a family run business. Uh, we established the school about 17 years ago um, after teaching ourselves. Uh, we started Lila and kept on teaching for a while. And then we came across and hired teachers like Jim, who showed us how it's really done. And we took a back seat from the teaching and, um, you know, concentrated on running the business. We're a British Council accredited school and we're a member of Quality English. Um, we're a, we are accredited by... OAT, which is the um, the governing body that runs the tests for uh, overseas healthcare workers if they want to practice in English speaking countries or uh, lots of other countries around the world, they need a test to prove their level of English and the OAT is one of those. We're also uh, accredited by Cambridge Assessment English to run um, their exams, the Cambridge exams and Cambridge CELTA. And we're very proud of the fact that we've been shortlisted for Star English Language School Europe um, five times now, which is um, more than any other English language school in the UK. So we're very, very proud of that fact. Now, lots of people have um, an adequate level of English. Their level of English is okay for them to get by. So we often have students chatting to us, whether online or they come into Lila, or sometimes they talk to their um, advisors at the agents they use to, uh, to book their courses with us. And they're really looking for reassurance and um, they want to know whether it, it is the right thing for them to do, because, you know, sometimes they've got a fairly good level of English and it can be perceived as expensive. And they want to know whether it will, will really help much and whether it'll make any difference. And we think our students are the best people to tell you about that. So I've put together a couple of little testimonials here from students that have reached out to us and told us why studying at Lila really helped them. So we've got Cathy from Taiwan, who was looking for full-time work um, in England. And she came to Lila um, to improve her English so that it would help her get a job. And she was so delighted when she achieved her ultimate goal and she um, got full-time work in England. And she put, put it down to um, the fact that she came to Lila as her language school. She describes the teachers as patient and passionate about what they do and says how much they helped her um, achieve her goal, which is just absolutely fantastic. And it makes me super proud of the stuff we do at Lila and the team that we've got. However, not everybody is looking to go into work. Some people need English language and the skills and that we can help them with when they're applying for university. And Fawaz here is a perfect example. He's now studying um, electrical engineering at a very prestigious university in the north of England. And um, he actually started as an elementary student at Lila. 
he, he started as elementary and progressed to advanced really quickly. Now, a lot of that is because of the work ethic he had. He put a lot of work into what he did. He was a very sociable, very bubbly guy and had a lot of fun while he was at Lila and in Liverpool. But he knew ultimately his goal was to get to university and he worked hard to achieve that. And, and we helped him focus on that goal and we did everything we could to support him. And, and it, ultimately um, that's what he did. And I think he's in his third year now. So very proud of Bowers, keep in touch with him. Um, but some people might simply want to enjoy their traveling and, and that's fine too. Um, we have, for example, here Rodrigo and Luisina from Argentina, and that was their goal. They wanted to um, improve their English while they were in the UK because they wanted to see a lot of it and get the most out of their experience. And I think those, pass those passive communicate, those passive English language skills that lots of people have. So you might be very good at reading and very good at writing because you've been a very diligent student throughout your study history are great and they'll get you a long way. But the more active ones like the speaking and listening skills that you can really only get by being in a classroom with lots of other students um, learning at the same time as you are really what will help you get the most out of your, um, your, your traveling experience because it's, that is really all about communication. So whatever your goals are, I really invite you to share them with us and then we can look and talk to you. You can talk to the teachers about the best course and the best path for you to achieve those goals. Um, I said earlier that our students were our best adverts and it's, it's really true. I've got a little clip here from one of our students from last year, I thought I'd play it, only take a couple of seconds. I will speak about my experience here in Leila. First time when I came here, I was shy and I don't speak with anyone. After uh, maybe one month just, I was moving to a lot of levels. First, I was in the elementary. After that, I was to advanced level. So I am so proud to myself and I advise all the people from Tulayla and <laughs> have experience here because uh, you will learn a lot and the teacher amazing amazing i swear to god this is amazing and enjoy oh this is lovely Okay, well, I will um, hand you over to Jim because he's the, the reason you're here and he will impart his knowledge on listening to you. When he's finished, please stay on because I've got um, some information about some really um, exciting packages that you might be interested in. So I'll let Jim take over from here. Um, enjoy. Thank you, thank you, Leanne. So uh, listening, listening, what is so hard about listening? Well, listening is without a doubt one of the more difficult skills. So I'm going to take you through a couple of reasons why it's difficult and then we'll explore the skill itself and look at some practical handy tips that you can do to become better listeners. Uh, and I'm constantly told I need to be a better listener. So let's, uh, let's crack on with that. Um, listening is one of the hardest skills. Mainly, you only get one go. You miss it and it's gone. A lot of the time, maybe not all of the time, but that's certainly how it feels. When you read, you can read, you can reread. When you listen, you miss it and it's gone. Now, Giovanni will tell you, uh, uh, anyone who's been in Liverpool will tell you that the Scouse accent is, is, is one of the more difficult accents to, uh, to understand. As a, as a Yorkshireman myself from the, um, from the east of the country, uh, I, I also came over. And initially, I struggled with the Scouse accent. It is difficult. And not just... Liverpool. Liverpool, it's the north of England compared to the south of England. It's Ireland, Scotland, America, Australia, Singapore, Canada, Nigeria. Lots of lots of English language uh, languages, uh, sorry, varieties of English language spoken around the world. 
and each of them have a different accent. And then, of course, the most commonly version, uh, the most common version of English used is English used by non-native speakers. And then we have more accents again to contain. Uh, beyond the accents, we have our fillers, as you may have heard. So I've been, um, well, uh, how can I put it? Uh, uh, all of these fillers are perfectly natural. We do them in our own language, but you need to tune in. You need to recognize them. You need to be prepared for them. I think sometimes in the classroom, we make things a little bit too perfect. And you have a, um, an actor talking and everything's delivered perfectly naturally. Of course, in the real world, people don't deliver. People don't speak in that way. And we get all of these fillers. So something else to contend with. Uh, beyond fillers, we have the words versus the meaning. What are you trying to say by that? What do you mean by that? What did you mean when you said blah, blah, blah? We will look at this in a little bit more de depth later. I've got some nice examples for you. Uh, so we'll come back to that one in a second. Uh, next, you might have to listen to something long and, God forbid, potentially boring. Uh, Leanne, you're pinching my slide. <laughs> um, we don't always get to choose to what we listen to. Now, in the classroom, yeah, I'm wrong. In the classroom, uh, there we try to raise interest. We try to get you interested in the topic. If you go to university, it's probably going to be something you're interested in. But in everyday life, not always. Sometimes, unfortunately, we have to listen to something that we may be not so interested in. And it can be long. And this is something that can interfere with our listening skills. And finally, background noise. Well, I've mentioned it already. Life isn't perfect. Life doesn't come in a soundproof booth, a soundproof booth where we can listen with no background noise, with no traffic, with no wind, with no people chatting in the background. So these are what, well, some of the things that I think make listening one of the tougher skills. So it helps to know what you're listening to. When we listen in our first language, we know what to expect. If I'm in the train station, I know I'm going to be listening for the times of the train, the delays, the platform numbers. If I'm at university, even if I don't know exactly what's going to be said, I know the topic, I signed up for this topic. If I ask a question, I can expect a reply to my question, even if I don't know what it is. So in the same way that your teacher sets a task in the classroom, set yourself a task. Make yourself, make a prediction. What am I going to hear? What we do in our first language. A lot of language acquisition, as we call it, we don't call it learning a language so much these days, we call it language acquisition. We're just replicating what we do in our first languages. So when I'm in my first language, I set my task. I know what I'm expected to hear. I make a prediction and I check my predictions. We can do this in our learned languages too. We can use the cues and the clues that we are given. Does the intonation suggest a question? Is it a question? Or is it a statement? Listen to the, the song of the voice. Listen to the, the tone. The intonation is about the tone. Is the person angry? Is the person annoyed? Is the person sad? Or is the person happy? And all of these cues, all of these clues will help us be better listeners. Now, normally we have clues in front of us. I can read partner's facial expressions, body language, but we don't always have that. So 
the intonation will certainly help with that. Now, know how to listen. Now, it, it sounds a bit silly. This, of course, you know how to listen. Everybody knows how to listen. You just there you are, and the sound goes in. Well, think of it slightly differently. Think of hearing as just the sound and listening when you tune in and you focus. So when the teacher is asking you all those questions, does it matter if you understand everything? What are you going to do if you don't understand that word? Do this for yourself. There's different types of listening and the teachers have got a reason to do this and you can do it in your own language too, in your, in your own life too. So know how to listen. Well, listening is compiled of three so skills, we call listening skills. So listening, reading, writing, speaking are our skills. The sub skills are the types of listening that we do within those. We have listening for gist. We'll talk about that soon. We have listening for specific information. I'll talk about this in a second. And we have listening for detail. So three different ways that we can listen, and I'm going to talk about each of these, don't worry. Three different ways that we can listen, and if we know how to listen, then we immediately become better at this. Let's look at the first one, listening for gist. Gist, if you don't know it, is the context, the main idea. What is the person talking about? What is the situation, the scenario in which they're talking? And you can ask yourself the question the teacher would normally ask. Do I need to understand everything? If I'm in a train station and I suggested I'm in a train station. If I'm listening to a news story, is it positive or is it negative? So. Do I need to understand everything? No. I think one of the big barriers between listening successfully and not listening successfully is that panic we get. When I read, if I don't understand something, I can stop. I can look up the word. I can ask my friend. I can ask my teacher. I can think for a minute. Oh, I know that. I know that. If I am... Um, If I'm listening for, for gist, well, I'm gonna, I can't stop and think about that word because then I miss everything that follows it. So it's keeping your cool. Don't panic and don't worry if you don't understand everything. What happens if there's a word? It's fine. You're going to cope without it. Will I have another chance to listen if I don't hear everything? Well, sometimes yes, sometimes no. If the person's directly in front of you, you're probably going to have that opportunity to ask them again, to repeat. If I'm in a train station or an, announcement, or an airport and I'm listening to an announcement, or I'm in a city and I hear somebody speaking over a loudspeaker, maybe I don't have an opportunity. If I'm at university, I probably can't ask my lecturer to repeat what he said, then I've probably got the notes to compare with. So think about the solutions and don't panic if you don't get everything first time. So as I say, the examples of just listen, is it positive, is it negative? Is it serious, is it funny? Is it providing necessary information or is it just general chit chat? And all of these things, if you can hone in and think beforehand, what am I listening for? Then when it comes to the listening, you're already choosing, you've already made your predictions, and then you're just checking to see if it's correct. Listening for specific information. Listening for specific information. I think, and this is personal, I think this is the easiest one of the three. So what is it? Listening for specific information is listening for numbers, listening for dates, listening for names. So, I'm at university. 
and you need to decide who did this piece of research. It was B.S. Skinner in 1962. Skinner, 62. That's what I note down. It, it's a weather forecast. I'm listening for the temperatures. If it's a train station, I'm listening for the platform number, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the key here, and, the, and, and this is the technique to try and master, is only listen for what you need. You can tune out so much when you're listening for specific information. Essentially, when you're listening for specific information, you're listening for those named you're listening for what was in the question already you're listening for about five percent of what the person said so 95 percent of what has been saying is not even relevant it's not necessary and you can just listen out i need to hear that date i need to hear that name and train yourself and a great way to train yourself is, of course, the weather forecast. You can listen for temperatures. Right, I am going to challenge myself to find out what the weather will be like in London, Bristol, Liverpool, Manchester, and Edinburgh. Everything else I can tune out to. But when I hear those words, when I hear the word Liverpool, then I listen. That's all I need to do. So listening for specific information. I was going to say one of the least used skills, probably not one of the least used skills because it's very context dependent. It very much depends on the situation that you are in already, but you don't need to listen to everything and you half know your answers already. Listening for detail. Now, listening for detail for me, Detail and gist are quite challenging. These are the more difficult ones. Um, this is the reading between the lines, listening between the lines. For example, if I, Giovanni and Francesca and Murad are eating a pizza and I walk up to them and I say, oh, that pizza looks nice. And I'm starving hungry. And you're both, you're all three very generous people. And actually that's my favorite pizza. Am I talking about a pizza? No, I'm saying, give me a piece of your pizza. So we're listening between the lines. And again, the intonation will help. Think about these three sentences, or utterances, we should say. Sorry. So if I say, Sorry. Do I mean I'm sorry? If I say sorry, do I mean I'm sorry? Probably not. If I say sorry, am I apologizing? I'm asking you to repeat yourself. So sometimes we have the body language that will help us, but sometimes the intonation is what tells us. You aren't English, are you? Why do you pretend to be English? You told me you were English and you can't read in English. You can't spell English and you don't know where London is. You aren't English, are you? Ah, now I don't know. Now I'm asking you because I need something translated into my language. But you aren't English, are you? Ugh. They eat too much and they're lazy and they're boring. I don't like English people. No. Very much the intonation can change that. You think Jim's rude? You should speak to Leanne. Why? If you think Jim's rude, you should speak to Leanne. Leanne's the boss. She'll tell Jim off. If you think Jim's rude, you should speak to Leanne. She's even ruder. So, context, intonation carries all of that meaning. And if you can listen out, for that half of what we hear is a pattern half of what we hear it's not just if you think jim we're listening to the pattern we're listening to the flow and we're listening to the intonation 
So, speaking of patterns, we listen to patterns and we listen to chunks. Now, a chunk is a unit of language. You're taught chunks in your lessons. We don't teach you, for example, how plus old plus am is are plus object. We teach you, if you want to know someone's age, ask, how old are you? And you can listen to these fixed chunks. There's only one way, really, to ask somebody's age. We wouldn't say, if we're teaching offers, and if you're listening to an offer, we teach, would you like? We don't teach modal auxiliary would plus object plus present simple like plus object. No, we, we teach, would you like? And in the same way, we, people speak these chunks, these units of language, and you can start to pick up on those. Language is about sequences of chunks. And, and you can tune in and you can listen to those sequences of chunks. You can become better listeners by recognizing those typical structures, those functional chunks. Each of these chunks, it has a job. Where are you? It's over here. In the same way that we speak in chunks, we can try to listen in chunks. So, the next one is still in the context of chunks and chunking language, bit of a linguistics term, but we can also listen for patterns. Words in isolation sound different from words in context. For example, would you like? But that's not what we say. We say, would you like? That's the strange j symbol here. Would you like? So we're not listening for would you like. We're listening for would you like. You becomes j. Would you? Would you? Or have you? Been there. Nobody asks that. Have you been there? Have you been to Spain? Have you been to Saudi Arabia? And it sounds almost lazy. Like, have you been? Well, it's not lazy. It's what we call weak sound. So, in natural pronunciation, we have stressed syllables. Have you, have you been there? And we have weak syllables. So, Sometimes we stress, and then the opposite is the weak sound. If you can listen for those weak sounds, the connected speech, would you like, have you been there? Then again, you can become better listeners. Two apples, two waffles. I'd like two waffles, please. How many waffles would you like? Two waffles, please. Three umbrellas, two waffles. There's this W coming from, there's no W in waffles, but it's joined to the end of two. Two, two waffles, I'd like two waffles, please. English is not a phonemic language. English pronunciation is not regular. Look at that word. Who's gonna be brave? Tell me what that word, how we pronounce this word. Anyone? It's easy. Pronounce fish. Fish. La. Women. Translation. The of la, the i of women, and the sh of translation. English is not regular. You need to be careful. Don't see the word in your mind and predict what it's going to sound like. Listen to other people speaking. Listen to how they say it. A big one is ED at the end of the word. 
And for example, he asked me a question. So he asked me a question. Uh, so try and tune in to your native teacher. And your native teacher is anybody on the radio, anybody on the news, anybody walking up and down the street, your classmates, everyone around you, your children, everyone around you. We don't listen in isolation, and, th and this is key. So we don't listen in isolation. We don't listen to solitary words. We've said that already. Listening isn't done in isolation. To listen well, we have to observe how others speak. We have to adjust our own speaking to sound like those around us. When I listen, I probably have to speak or read or write. We don't, you know, well, we, um, we don't always finish our, uh, you know, we, well, you get it. And it's the difference between a sentence and an utterance. In a book, in a script, that would say, we don't always finish our sentences. But when people speak, you've got to allow for the irregularities of spoken language. And if my audience has already and from their facial expression, I know they understand me, then I might not bother to finish my, uh, well. And sometimes we, we repeat, well, you know, we repeat, you know, we repeat what we've already said. And these are things you need to tune in for. As he's saying repeat three times. Did I, did I get it wrong first time? Did he say something else? Maybe his friend's called Pete. Natural pronunciation, it's natural rhythm of language. Productive language is very different to effective, effective different. Uh, so we need to learn how to clean up our listening. Listen to others. I can go to France and I can read in a book B O N J O U R, and then I can walk around saying, Bonjour, bonjour, everyone. And then I listen to the people around me, bonjour, and I think, okay, I need to become a mimic. So my spoken skills, and this is what I mean by listening isn't done in isolation, by honing in, by tuning in on how I speak, I become better tuned in on how to listen to others speaking. And the two very much go hand in hand. In the same way that we can replicate when we write from what we read. We can replicate what we speak from what we hear. And we can be better listeners by tuning in and hearing those differences between uh, what we're saying and what we're listening to. So, some final thoughts for you. Summary of what we said. Listening isn't done in isolation. Think about your audience when you speak. It will help you train. Do they know what I'm going to say? And do I know what they're going to say? Think about what you're listening for. So where am I? What am I trying to get? There's an information gap. Murad has some information. I have different information. We need to communicate. I need to understand, interpret, and tune in to what he's saying for me to be able to grasp it. And the opposite is also true. Think about where you are because it'll help you think how you're going to listen. Use the cues and the clues around you. The sing song of a language, their tone, where they are, who they are, the intonation, all this will help you become a better listener. Listen for the patterns. How do you, where is my, how much is the, etc. So, Listen out for the chunks, 
and listen out for the pattern that language makes. I, words in isolation are very different to words within a meaningful context. And listen to how that changes. Now, the only way that you can do that is by exposing yourself to as much listening as you can. Now, fortunately, when I was learning French at school, we had a cassette player and we had to borrow it from the teacher and we had to play it. We had to find my Walkman, my Sony Walkman, which was about the size of a briefcase, uh, to play a single cassette. And then I had to get my pen out to rewind it because the battery went flat. Now we've got MP3, we've got internet, we've got internet radio. You can listen to any radio station in the world pretty much. Uh, and having that exposure, even if you don't test yourself, just having that radio, right? Having that sound in the background, not everyone is fortunate enough. Sorry, my battery, just one sec. Not everyone is fortunate enough to always be able to travel. I would love to go and spend five years in Italy and become an expert. But when you come to Liverpool, you can tune in to the people around you. You can tune in. But when you go home, you can continue to tune in. Have that sound in the background. And even if it just start to recognise different words, the way certain things are pronounced, start to self-correct and you start to see or hear how language differs from what it necessarily looks like. They are my top tips on how to be a better listener. And let's face it, we all want to be better listeners. Leanne. That was brilliant, Jim, really interesting. Um, sorry about taking over the screen. What I was trying to do was put in the chat, if anyone has any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, I should have said it earlier. Does anyone have any questions? If now is your ch chance, if you'd like to, if, if um, you'd like Jim to explain any, a little bit more about anything that he's gone over or something that he hasn't covered, um, either put it in the chat or unmute yourself. There aren't too many of us, so that's fine. Let me just check. No, <laughs> Okay, so I thought sort of some, that Jim summarised the, the main points of his presentation there. Um, before I let you go, could I just have a couple of minutes of your time to go over an amazing offer that we've put together for you? Um, it'll only take me five minutes and Jim and I have got our heads together and we've thought about, you know, what, what things we can offer you in addition to the general English course or the IELTS course, whatever it is you need to make sure that you really get the most out of your experience. And we've done our homework and we know that this package is, is exclusive to Lila. Um, we've looked at what other schools are doing out there and we've tried to make something really unique and different for you. Um, because I could control your screen, but I can't control mine. Okay, so if you join Lila as a student, whether online or um, face to face, because we're now back up and face to face, we reopened on Monday. We have set up a Lila study group on Facebook. It's a private Facebook group. And it's there for support, for networking, and for regular free tips that we, um, as Lila and the teachers, will post in there and students can share resources. And it's a really good supportive network of people that have got the same or similar goals to you. And that is by whatever means, improving your language acquisition. I now know it's called. <laughs> um, I'm studying myself and I've been invited to join a similar um, Facebook group and I've found it invaluable which is why we've decided to set one up for the different groups at Lila so we've got an OET one we will have a CELTA one and we want one for the for the students we've got a, an, a psychosocial group but we want a, a private study group on Facebook for students so we'll keep 
dropping in with free um, resources and tips and different things for you to do to keep your studies off. As part of this um, package, we want to offer you a free one-to-one -one debriefing meeting with Jim or one of our teachers. So when you um, start a course at Lila, you will do an initial assessment task and it will use that to um, decide which class to put you in. Um, this sometimes is followed up by, um, by your teacher who will um, have a look at you in class and decide whether you are in the right class. But just to make sure that you really are in the right place and when you so you can hit the ground running when you start your studies, we're offering a free debriefing session. So you'll get detailed, personalised feedback on your initial assessment. We're also waiving the registration fee. We know things are quite challenging at the moment and um, because of the pandemic, people are really concerned about making the most of their money, making it go that little bit further. And the registration fee is something that we usually charge to cover the, the admin that's involved in all of the things like um, your initial assessment, placing you in the right class, registering on your systems, producing registers, but we, we are happy to waive that as well as offer a 10% discount on any tuition fees. So whether it's online, one-to-one, -one, or as part of a group, then you as a, an attendee of this um, masterclass are entitled to that 10% discount. We want, we're really confident that studying at Lila uh, will be a positive choice that you've made and we want to be part of your learning journey. And that's why we're putting in all these extras to make sure that you choose Lila when you come to learning a language. If you choose to study and book the course through an agent, then just let the agent know what we've talked about and what we've offered you, and they will be more than happy to arrange that on, on your behalf. So if you go to your emails, you can email me. My name's Leanne, and my email address is leanne at lilalovetolearn.com. If you use the subject masterclass and ask for a link to our online level test, then you can claim your exclusive offer and take the first step on your journey with Lila so that you will love to learn. Thank you very, very much for your time today. It's been lovely to see you. Um, we've still got a couple of minutes. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, Jim and I will stay online for a couple of minutes. If not, then I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, enjoy the rest of your week. And um, I'd love to see you again at the next one. So keep an eye on all our socials and hope to see you all soon. If you want to unmute, take your, put your microphones on. You can say goodbye. It'd be lovely to hear you. Thank you. Thank, oh, thanks. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much. Bye -bye. Bye. I hope to come back soon to Lila. Oh, that would be lovely. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Okay. Thank you so much. Oh, oh you're welcome. useful information. Yes, I was. It was a very nice to to see you again, and I'm very miss Liverpool, and I hope to come back someday. Uh, <laughs> we'd you. love to have you back. Thank you. Thank you so much. Take care. See you soon. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye, Francesca. Bye. 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 David, you can stay on as well if you want. Yeah, I just want to talk to David, actually. I Hello think. there. Hi, David. How are you? Good, good. My, my computer, it's funny. I'm having some problems. My, my, um, I don't know if it's my computer or, or Zoom, but I, I'm still looking at a screen that just says listen to patterns and chunks. I'm guessing that was from a long time ago, right? Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's, uh, for some reason, I, I, my computer was painfully slow to wake up uh, when I got back home. So I got back at about 20 past and I spent 10 minutes trying to get everything up and running and get into Zoom. So I think my computer's just, uh, yeah, updating or something. But it was, yeah, I was able to hear most things. So Good. that's where I came in when you, when Jim, when you were talking about the patterns and the chunks. And uh, yeah, why didn't we learn chunks uh, of language? So I think really it must have been all right for everybody else. Otherwise, someone would have said, wouldn't they? Oh, absolutely. I think, yeah, I think it's just my computer. Uh, okay. I think my Zoom is, uh, I can't see anyone right now as well. You'll notice my camera's not on. I, uh, I saw some fro a frozen image.